And you know, the thought that I had was about what is the measure of a man? What is the measure of a man? And in thinking about it, I learned that we should ask not how a man died, but how he lived. Not what he gained, but what he did. What he did, what did he give? And in thinking about Mr. Gregory, because I would never dare call him missionary. <laughs> Remember, in, in the booklet here, in the inside cover, I'm the little boy standing to his right. I don't know what happened. Um, but um, I'm sorry to lift the veil, but I have to tell you, this was a very ferocious man. This was a fierce man. Right? This was the kind of man who uh, was a wonderful example to a child, especially to a poor child. Those of us who grew up, without going into the details of our family structures, those of us who grew up without a father, would look to men like Mr. Gregory for the template about how you should conduct yourself, your template for how you run your life, your template for how you organize your business, and your template for how you treat our women. This was the measure of that man. So I would give four small indications of my measure of Mr. Gregory. This was a man with integrity with a capital I. You were in no doubt about the difference between right and wrong when you were in his company. I was a naughty little boy. My, my brothers and sisters of ten. I, uh, well, that's not good. <laughs> However, in every six weeks holiday, my mother would send me to my uncle, uh, I think to get straightened out. <laughs> and I think a few kicks were knocked out over the course of those summers. Never in any doubt about the difference between right or wrong. I was never hit. You would just have to look. <coughs> uh, that was if you did something bad. If you did something really bad, he would just have to talk to you. And you really did. You felt, my goodness, I've let this man down. That's, that's the kind of impact he had on us. The second measure of this man was self-reliance. John, Joyce, my seniors, Carmelita, others mentioned. This man ran his own business and was self-employed in the 60s when most of us were struggling to be somebody's employee. This man stood tall. He believed in self-reliance. He worked hard, but he worked for himself. It's made a profound impact on me as a young man. Profound. Welfare, benefits, taking things no way, under no circumstances. If anything, his was the first time to go in his pocket to help the next person on the basis that he ran his business, his affairs, on the basis of his skills, his personal discipline, Organize, never late, get up early, do what you need to do, and finish it well before you go and enjoy yourself. The third measure of this man was the clothes. We'd see him in his work clothes early in the morning before dawn. But oh my goodness, the suits in the evening. You know, the style. The idea that, wow, in the 60s, when a lot of us were struggling, this man was determined to show that he worked hard and then had his dignity to put on really, really good clothes and to make
make sure that his wife was extraordinarily well dressed. And for all men, after certain days in your life, you know that the condition of your wife is an indication of your own worth. It's not how well you're dressed, it's how well dressed she is. Fourth, maybe the final measure for this short talk, the fourth measure of this man was the scale of the love that he could generate. The love sufficient to be a father to children, not his own sometimes, but who knew no other father and called him father fully without qualification. Early in his life and later in his life too, he took others of us under his wing, even those who are not stepchildren, but he would never leave you out. Always loyal to you, always had a kind and generous word to say to you, as well as the encouragement to do more, do better. And out of that love came fabulous parties. I remember going to parties at this man's house that made me think, my goodness, I want my home to be like that when I'm grown up. You wanted to spend your evenings and your summers in his home because it was a place that A, you felt proud of, but B, there was so much fun under that roof. It's a man that generated the kind of self-confidence amongst his family and amongst his children that made you think, yeah, I can be who I want to be. But this wasn't a softy man, he wasn't a soft man. I knew he loved me. He called me because I love you. No. Put his arm around you, take you where he's going, he'd buy you the things that you always wanted. And then he would talk to you, even as a little boy, talk to you as though you're a big man. Talk to you about what you needed to do next in your life, how you needed to stand up straight how you needed not to back away from this issue, that problem, or this person. A wonderful man, a fine man, a man of giant-sized integrity, a man of self-reliance, a man with great clothes, and most of all, a man who brought fatherly love to an immense range of us who feel proud to look to him in that fatherly role. It's a real, honor for me to wish you well on your journey and I thank you for everything you brought to all of our lives. It was our pleasure to live.